How are you today? Okay. All right. I have a matter of great concern. Go speak up. In reference to... Yes. Let's speak up for me, please. GRA. Yes. Oh, their, their service is very disgusting. Yesterday, I visited them to do trans, to transact a business. A simple compliance. I, they, I called him before I reached, and I confronted the person who had given me her name before. However, when I reached, she said, thank you, have a seat. Like one o'clock. You know when I finished that transaction, what time? Four o'clock yesterday. Huh? No, it is disgusting. And when they, when they completed it, they printed it, they gave me, if I didn't read, I would have come home, waste time on transportation to go back again. They spelled my name wrong, and some other fineries, they print it wrong. Now, wh where are we going? Hmm? Now, the passport office has, they really <coughs> have improved. Because why? They have representatives office in the different region, right? Now, the central passport office is very excellent in this service. I think GRA should implement such a, a service. You understand? Are you, are you there? I'm listening. I always listen yes. attentively. I'm happy that you're sitting there as a minister of government to represent this cause. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, thank you. Well, you know, GRA comes directly under the Minister of Finance, the Honorable Winston Jordan. I will get involved, like how you call me. I'm a minister, I'm a minister of finance. I could get involved, but uh, apparently the Commissioner General don't like when I get involved. So uh, apparently he claims that I'm interfering. And so I don't want to get involved However, if I'm forced, because I'm a member of parliament, on that grounds, I could get involved. So I would advise you to report this matter to the Honorable Minister Winston Jordan. And if you don't have any positive uh, indication of that they apologize for the way you were treated, and they, they will indicate that they will make changes or take your recommendation, and you're making a very good recommendation that they should look at the passport office, well then, maybe I could take it up on your behalf. But let's take it to Minister Jordan so he could deal with the Commissioner General. Yes, Mr. Raman? No, she's right what she said. The, the, these, um, that, that's a good example. The passport office decentralization is working and people are getting benefits. There is no blockage when you go there. People are, people, if they tell you that you must come back in five days and ask you if you want it to be posted at the local office where you are, you can go up there and you can uplift it so you don't have to come back to Georgetown. It's a perfect system. It's a good example of how decentralization will take place. And it's important that we educate people, as you said, about the fact that we allow the people to participate in in, in, in expressing their views. This is the only program in the country that allows the masses of people to come up here to tell us about their problems and to suggest, not, not like mad people just to criticize, but they, they constructively tell us what they think should happen to solve the problem. Well, that is what we want. We want solution because I, I may appear to have some of the answers, but not, never I would have all the answers. So I depend on you, the people. So let me take the next call. Caller, you're there. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, just one toilet. I want to uh, I just said, if you could just take a drive and dive to the street, so when you come in, don't come with a car, come with a cruiser, because it's going to damage up your car, the car, the street, them and diamond. It is so disgusting. You know, I went to real far, you know, you don't even know which side to take on a Google Tree, the whole button goes and all the way through. Even if you can see a road, then now it's getting so bad. You got some holes on your left hand side when you come in, 
you got to serve on your right or maybe cause accident, you know. So I don't know if you can look into that for us too. Is it the main road? The main uh, road? Carla, the... I don't know if you're aware, but I do live in Diamond. And so I know the situation in Diamond. This is what Mr. Ramon was indicating. We had local government 2016. The PPP won the majority of the NDCs. They claim 70%. The I, have no, I have no fight or argument if it's 70% or less. So they could have win 100%. But because they win these NDC, they are in charge. And so they're also in charge and responsible for the road and the infrastructure. Exactly. But they don't want to make enemies <laughs> with no one. Why do you think they never had elections for 23 years? Because having local government elections will require the councillors and the NDC to raise funds to ensure that they collect the taxes, the, 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 taxes, the mm -hmm. rates, and to work. execute works and services to the community. But they don't want that because they will have to increase rates. And increasing rates is like when this government decides to adjust the, 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 um, the fees that you will pay. And not taxes, but we increased the fees because there was not increased for some time, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You need to put them in a more realistic perspective. And when we did that, we became enemies. The PPP was getting away from that for 23 years. They didn't want to make enemies with no one. So now they have 70% of the NDC. They still would not increase the rates. They still would not ensure that it's collection of the rates, but they're going to fight the government for the government to give them subvention, for the government to go in to do the roads and then they will get the good name. But don't work like that. The NDCs have to ensure that they collect the rates and execute works and services. Government will and can't assist them with subvention, which it was doing since 2015. And so they will have to be responsible. They will have to be accountable they are and transparent in awarding those contracts to fix those roads. I'm living in Diamond. My friends in Diamond, my supporters in Diamond will say, look, come see my road. And I don't want to go and say, go fix that road because my supporter living in there. What example I will set? I understand the NDC is saying to people, contribute the money and they will bring in the equipment. I don't know. Or bring the material and they will bring the heavy machinery. I don't know what arrangement they have in place, but these are some of the things that they have in, that they're, they're, they're saying to the uh, residents of Diamond. But that's a so, PPP controlled Yes, 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 that's NDC. a PPP NDC, yes. And right, so I'm saying this is what replicates for the same NDCs that they control. They must take responsibility. However, I'm getting a caller, and I promise that I have to say to you what um, the leader indicated to me, which is very important. Caller, you in there. Hello? Hello? Okay, <clears throat> well, viewers, listeners, supporters of the Voice of the People program, my father, C.N. Sharma, the leader of the Justice Party, uh, you, you would have noticed that he's not in the program. He's not in the program for a reason. He didn't want anyone to disclose why he's not in the program. Uh, but he gave me permission to speak. And so like a good son and a good follower, because he's also my leader, I will um, do as he said. Well, for the past two weeks, he's in the United States of America receiving medical treatment. Uh, it has to do with his heart. And so he will be undergoing surgery. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but it may be sometime next week. He said he wants you, the people, the supporters, and friends to know this, and so I'm saying this to you. You're probably saying this to me, uh, maybe to, in some way to ask you for your prayers, because he believes prayers move mountain. So I'm going to say to his many supporters, listeners, followers, and his, um, you know, relative. his relative and friends, and all those Guyanese that supported him throughout the good times and bad times. And that's, uh, Mr. C. N. Sharma, the leader of the Sra Party, and the operator, the owner of Channel Six, uh, is in the hospital. He will be going through a surgery. It could be life-threatening. Uh, I don't know what's the probability, 
but he certainly thinks um, you should know, and I'm giving you this message from him himself. He said to say that he loves you all, and he's going to be back on the program to continue his work. So let me go to the line. Caller, you're yeah, there. Yes, Mr. Raman? Will you go to the call I'm not seeing the number. If I don't see the number, I'm not going to take the call. If it's a private number, I will not take the call. So well, I encourage you to call on 225-0010 with landline and cell. And if you have your cell, you could call 225-0008. Yeah, Mr. Minister. Hello, you're there. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, I want to say God's feet. So, um, the surgery may go well, and may the blessings of God be on Mr. Sharma, and may he come through good, because um, I've been looking at the program for so long, and um, it's been very informative, and we will have to have him back in here. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank, thank you. you much. Caller, you're in the air, Vice City People Program. Good afternoon to Mr. Jaipal. Yes. I just want to say um, my prayers goes go out to Mr. Sharma because I'm a supporter of Mr. Sharma and you. And I just want to make my show. I just want to thank, thank, congratulate you all to what you are doing at the education. Thank you very much, Mr. Zaypal. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Raman? I think uh, it's, it's a good moment to reflect on all the things that Mr. Sharma did. He was a pioneer for the television in this country. He made it possible for the ordinary people to be able to express their views and opinions, not only on, on a telephone, but also they were able to do so when he visited them in their areas and their situations of distress. So it is time that we uh, reflect on the work that he did the people who got benefit directly or indirectly, and that we wish him well and hope that he'll be able to come back here and continue his good work. Okay, thank you. Caller, you in the air? A pleasant and a blessed good afternoon to you, Minister. Good afternoon And to also, you. Mr. Rahama. Thank you very much. My prayers are with CF. He has done so, so much. And I do not believe that God wants to cut him off now. Prayers with the surgeons, and he have a successful surgery. And God bless him and the family <coughs> also. Be with him in every undertaking, even after the post-surgery. He will be there with them. Trust him and acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Goodbye, and thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. That caller is actually a person who would call me every Monday morning to give me a prayer. A caller in there, please lower the volume of the television or radio. Hello. Hello? Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm going to make some comments, but seeing as I hear Mr. Sharma feeling too well, I can't make no comments today. No, anyway, no. You go ahead. You, you make your comments. I never say. Go ahead and make your comments. No, no, can't make this today, man. Uh, I just wish Mr. Sharma everything go good and the family, okay? Okay. Thank All you. Right, that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Carla, you on the air? Good afternoon, Mr. Sharma. Good afternoon. And Mr. Hammond. Good afternoon, sir. And by God's grace, because he is the person in charge of the lives, that your dad will be okay. He would put his his blessings on each and every instrument that the surgeons who should ever perform on your dad because he is the person in charge. Mr. Shum, we all know that your dad you are blessed with this country because of <coughs> the system was every area he did and each and every individual should pray all the church should pray for Mr. Sharma. They remember the religion you came from because at the end of the day he did a good for Guyana because he is a neutral person instead of making the decisions. Along with you, Mr. Sharma, I must thank you very much for all your wisdom, your understanding, and your strength, your might. We know, as a person in charge, we know the situation you're in. We know some persons in position, only there, when you speak, 
out, there's a problem, but social media stay strong because the government who is in power is always get issues. If the PPP in power, the PNC in power, whosoever in power, they get issues because somebody feels that somebody is supposed to have something on somebody's behalf. But then they guys in charge of this country because we are so blessed. And if we should live as Guyanese, we should have a wonderful country. So, Mr. Sharma, my prayers go out to you, Mr. Sharma, and your whole family, and whole Guyana. Let us understand that life is wonderful with or without us. Only we live peacefully, loving, and caring to one another. Thank you very much, Mr. Sharma. Good, thank you. I, if Mr. C. N. Sharma is listening to the program, he certainly be happy. Color. Yes, so the program is not just uh, calling. I know you're going to pray. Um, use the program as he would want you to use it to highlight your problem. You could say um, your, sympathy, your sympathy with the family in relation to his illness and, re and, and wish him a good health. You will probably attend church tomorrow or your own time. You, you will pray for him. Carla, in there. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yeah. You know, people, uh, sugar worker is a pension, right? Yes. And these things are do so badly that they look back on the government, they look back on guys. Now they want the people from high school, pensioner, who got a bank for money. Now the bank will charge you $60. <laughs> you think not fair? And they want another thing. But poor man get four thousand dollars and he not able to walk, he get on bed. Right? He got paid two thousand dollars for CI for go parika and two thousand dollars for come back. What the person was left with? These are the things I got to look at the senior citizen brother. I got to ensure that the senior citizen trade properly. If you are not treat them properly, then the money then dump out of paper and tell people. Well, oh, are here one thing if you secretary come and say that the, you discuss it with Comerson and then discuss it with you. Now, if you want to send the work at them off work, it's not a problem. But the pension at them, they, let me tell you, me and pension, when you go to me, they can hold somebody's hand, then they have a walk, brother, for going the line. If you see this, this condition of some of these people, and they're glad because they get their money fast, right? as soon as they get their money, they go and buy their little grocery. Now you can send them people to the bank and you got to pay home money. Let me tell you, they pass it alone at 2000 for CIA to work here. And 2000 will come back and a person get 4000 dollars for that night. Why that person go to left it? These are the things I got to look into, man. These are the things I got to look into. I want anything. We live in CIA. Since I come in government, they strengthen the thing about their tall. And the NDC, they go to new. And the people are come and tell me what will happen. You got the AFC and you got the APNU. They are there, all of favor or what my name, they don't there. They must tell you when they get long boom. Now this rain of fall, brother, if you see my water left. And if this rain comes up for truth, who can pay the consequence of it? Who can give a carry anything? Nobody. The strength needs to take the back there. I live near the center of the back there. Where's that? 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 So, I explained to you about local government, and I said, not I said, the leader of the opposition general secretary, PVP, said the 170% of the NDC. That is a tier of government. That's the lowest tier of government. There is a second tier of government before it comes to central government, which, which is the regional government. Right? So they have the regional democratic organs. Now, the region that you're speaking about is the region that the PAP won. And so the chairman that you, you're speaking about is a PAP chairman. And so if he promised you a long boom excavator coming in and it's not happening, well, then you know where you should place your complaint. So central government, through the budget, will allocate monies to the central ministry, the regional authorities, Re region democratic council for the 10 regions. And of course, they will have uh, subventions and programs for the NDC, neighborhood democratic council. Now you can't solve each and every single area of this country, the issues. But your complaint should be taken up by the chairman of RDC, region three. 
And so I go again call on the chairman and I will speak with the area of Region 3 to find out what um, is its program for cleaning of that canal. I'm going to do that for you. But of course, that should be the chairman function, the council function. You shouldn't be calling a minister of government in this program. I'm happy you're calling, but you shouldn't have be calling. It's an embarrassment. Because you have councillors at the level of the RDC, which majority of them are PPPC, or small c, and they're the ones who should be looking after the interest. So, however, I will because some of my supporters, my father's supporters, are from Region 3. And so I will not neglect them. So our strength is in Region 4 and Region 3. And being a member of parliament, I'm going to ensure that their issues are given some, um, some importance. And so I will make contact, come on the, with the REO of Region 3 to ensure that some amounts of work needs to be done in the area. If it's the NDIA, I'm going to be calling them also to ensure that some amount of work is being done in this area. I can't imagine with the amount of rainfall, uh, what you tell me if it's true, um, that is very, very, very irresponsible. Right? Carla, you're there. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, and the other um, person there. Good afternoon. I just read this little thing from the um, suburbs. Don't give up. Tell your dad, don't give up. There are better days ahead. The part of the righteousness is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. My family and I wish him well and continue to pray. All will be well. Leave everything in God's hands. God bless you too. Continue your good work. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay, thank you. Well, yes, Mr. Raman? It's an embarrassment that people are calling in those areas that are dominate, TPP dominated, elected council, region three, is a, is a PPP elected count region. And the, Mr. Faber should be dealing who is the chairman of the region three. These people should be going to him at, the, at, the, at his office he has an office there, he has a secretary, to complain about these things and raise these, these things there. And I should be talking to the REO to see what the problem is, or the NDA to see what these problem is at that local, regional level. Because these things are centralized. You can't come to a minister when these things are, are supposed to be dealt with by the region. The region has got uh, has a budget, isn't it? Yes. That, that comes from, so how does that function so people can understand? Well, the region will develop their budgets, and so they, they, those budgets will be approved in the National Assembly too. So the funding, entire 100% funding, will come from central government. So the regions don't raise revenue. That revenue raising feature is for the uh, NDC, the Neighborhood Democratic Council. So the region is an arm of central government, a decentralized arm. So. Uh, each region will have various programs. They will have a program for administration. They will have a program for health. They will have a program for education. They will have a program for agriculture. And they will have a program for works. Now, these are the, the four major pillars that any region will need funding for sustainability. And who they come And so, well, each, each region and those programs are headed by a program head who is connected to the the Ministry of Local Government. And so that Ministry of Local Government and that respective head of that program also is linked to the, the subject ministry. So if the Ministry of Agriculture and you, had, you have the head for the agricultural program, you also have a connection to the, the, the Ministry of Agriculture. For education, the regional education officer connected to the, the Ministry of Education. Works, also they have a connection to infrastructure. And so to, to ensure that the left hand know what the right hand is doing, there is this type of collaboration. So central government will not come into your region and do something that you know the region is doing. And so that's, this is how central government will um, allocate monies 
for the various sectors in each region. See what is happening, Minister, is people want central government to intervene in areas where there's a level of independence. But, and the reasons for that is because things are not being done in their area, in their region, or in their, cons in their, in their MDCs. So there has to be, well, what I'm getting uh, from the, the callers is that there isn't enough accountability democratic accountability and financial accountability as what the council what the council is supposed to do and are they doing it and are they getting the results so it's, okay. all, it's all well and good for mr jagu to be talking about oh, we won all these seats we got won all these regions the the, the question is uh, are they delivering on the promises that they made to these people when they go to the election, to local government. Yes, and so this brings me to partially trying to handle the question that you um, would pose, and is the allegation by the lady opposition, general secretary of the PUP, that somehow the government is, uh, is gerrymandering um, the, the borders for the NDC for the upcoming local government election, November 2018. And the reason why you would want to have new local authorities is because over a period of time, the country is divided more than, more, more in so many pieces, more than what is activated. So if we have, if we have 71 local authorities presently, that is not the amount of local authorities. The country was already so destined to, to be divided in so many parts, but they, the minister, whoever is the minister at the time, did not activate those uh, neighborhood democratic councils. Why it was not activated? Because it didn't have the population. And so with the many new housing schemes of, created by the PPP and those that will be created by the AP and UAFC, there is a need now to ensure that there's some amount of control that those residents will have services provided to them. So that is the reason the minister who have the authority under the law decided to activate. He didn't create, he activate, he activated those NDCs. They were not functioning. No, not functioning. He activate them. There was never an existence in terms see. of being on paper. Yes, there yes, was yes. not recognized in, in law as being a NDC. Tuition is one of them. So what he did. It's now recognized. So now it's in law that it will be NDC and they will be uh, contesting the local government election. So he activated because why? The area has grown. It's need control. It need, the people need services. And so that is why you have an NDC. So that's a misinformation by Mr. Jack. Yes. So you need NDC. So the minister has to look at many uh, criteria before he say, I'm going to activate this NDC, and it must be demanded. So in the 2018 November local government election, there will be eight new NDCs and two new towns. And I explain to you why the towns, right? Because this is the, this, this is the vision of the president. Each region must have a capital town. So it will be the hub, the economic hub for that region. Color in there. Yes, Mr. Government? Yes. A pleasant good afternoon to yourself. Good afternoon. And yourself. Yes. Uh, Mr. Shamu, with the illness of your father, I think the whole country will be seeking for speedy recovery after his operation. Yes. And the blessing of your father would be answered by the Creator. I'll tell you for one or two reasons, I think that your father worked very hard for this country, for the people of the country. And I think with the aisle flowing, the Lord would give your father speedy recovery in returning back to enjoy and to inherit the benefit of his labor he worked for in this country. And uh, wish him speedy recovery and his very return, I hope he would not be working on the TV because that is too much fatiguing for Mr. Shah. And you must be able to advise him on 
that line. Mm. Thank you for your advice. One little thing more. I have um, seen some time back, that was two or three weeks back, a fellow was arrested, I think, from uh, Brazil or somewhere there, for making threatening things to the country but bam. Mm. And uh, I heard that Mr. Jadil makes some threats, and that chap is being locked up. Mr. Jadil makes some serious threats in this country, and I want to know who is afraid or why Mr. Jadil has been arrested as yet. <laughs> okay. I would like to know why he's not been arrested as yet for the things that he's going on. He's inciting things, and there's some people out there just ready to go. And Mr. Jadil must realize this. Okay. Okay, thank you for your voice. Thanks very much. Yes. Okay. So I know the ERC, Ethnic Relations Commission, is saying they're going to be paying him a courtesy call. That's the leading opposition. I hope that they will speak to him in relation to his behavior. And so uh, we will not have this outburst. We don't want division in this country. This country will be, I'm going to say, imaginably, inimaginably be growing. So it's something that you can't imagine, but it will happen. So it will be happening soon, sooner than you think. So two years is not long. Two years will, will be upon us in no time. And you just heard that Exxon Mobil discover next field, 256 meter of high quality sand bearing uh, oh. residue. So you heard about that. And what that means is that now the projection is move drastically. Yeah. And it's now 3.7 million barrels of oil. You can imagine what is that? And th this is not this is not figures that is accurate. They still have to they still have to appraise these wells. So uh, they will be doing appraisal wells, drilling wells around the area now, like this, to appraise how wide is the basin, how deep it goes, and things like that. So they appraise it, but they could give us a quick figure. And when they added to the existing amount, is now 3.7 million barrels of oil. If you don't know what I mean, I'm going to tell you. It means that in the next five years from now, I'm sure many of us will be around. Guyana will be receiving billions of US dollars. That is what it means. For billions. now, yes, for now, no. Because why it wouldn't be no? Why it would be no is because the company will have to recover its costs. So for the first five years, they will be doing cost recovery. But thereafter, we will have the true benefit of 50 plus share profitile. 50 plus being is 50-50, but we have a 2% um, royalty. So it's 50 plus. And so unimaginable. I can't tell you what they expect. Just use the imagination and th that is what it will be. So the population is presently 748,000, probably multiplied by 10 in the next five years. And so you may say, why you can't be living as a millionaire? Now I will have to be catering to 7 million people, right? So, however, we will not benefit from any of this if we fight amongst ourselves. Say we go into civil war and we decide for fight who should control the country. Every time you build or you construct something, it's been torn down. And so the politician, whoever the politician of that they, if that day should happen, they're the one who can benefit because they're going to ensure that they live happy. They live in, in a gated community and you fight and you kill yourself. But if we work as one, we all benefit from the resources. Now, the resources, where the oil money will be going? It will be going to an intergenerational fund. It means that part of that money being put aside for a future generation because that oil out there is not something that's going to last forever. Okay? So you have to save for the future generation. Everybody should benefit. So this sovereign wealth fund that will be created will have a portion of the money put aside for the future generation and a portion of the money that goes into development of the country and a portion of the money 
going into what you call a stabilization. Stabilization meaning that the issue with our sector, the agricultural sector in particular, sugar. And so money could go there to stabilize that sector. If the economy, for some reason, because of the fluctuation of prices, bam, oil prices drop, and you can't sustain a budget maybe of half a billion dollars, US dollars, 500 million US dollars, you, 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 you shortfall is that the stabilization fund will go and put, put monies in there to ensure that the country continues to operate at that level, right? So those are the three main areas in which um, the monies will go. So it will go to, for future savings, for generational purpose. It will go for development because we have to build roads, bridges. We have to build accommodation. We have to build hospitals, schools. And these, this is not maybe wooden structure. It may it, it can be concrete, a concrete jungle you'd probably be creating like in the United States and the other developed country. But you have to create new cities. Maybe the capital will move. We don't know. I can't imagine what's gonna happen. And so this is what will be happening. I'm project I'm projecting next five years. Right? Um Mr. Ramon? Well, the, you're right, because uh, we, we have not uh, calculated the, um, I mean, the oil in itself will definitely raise the standard of living. And if we are able to get that refinery here, the modular refinery here, it will mean that we, we will produce ah. oil here. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Sharma. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'd like to wish Mr. Sharma a speedy recovery. And I hope to see him soon back on the program. Now, in connection with uh, Mr. Raman, he made a statement that the, some of the NDCs were run by the PPP. Most and of them. Most they, of they're them. supposed to be responsible for the areas. Yes. But we have to understand that these um, NDCs, they are staff for funds due to the, over the years they weren't able to raise the rates and taxes and so on. So they don't have the funding to do any kind of major works. The major works normally have to be done by the central government, right? They depend heavily on the central government. Now, Mr. Bokan the other day allocated a sum of $57 million each to the constituencies in Georgetown, right? You all have to understand what going on, you know? No, no, no. Right? That's incorrect. Right? Pardon me? It's incorrect. Not true. It's not fifty-seven million each. It's fifty-seven million, and it will be distributed amongst the various constituencies. Right. What I'm saying, he could have done the same thing to the NDCs, so that they could be able to do some small, small works. For example, in Parfait Army, I spoke to you concerning the roads. Now I'm bending back now. I'm not seeing you. All we want now, we want no more road no more. Let me send in a grader. Let us just grade the road, fill up the holes, and throw some brick on it. We can take the photo, right? And then money could do that, right? So <laughs> this is the thing to you to look at. We can understand that the PPP control is and control them. Let me see who we could do now for help the people. You understand? Perfect. Get in the grader, grade the road and back, fill up the hole, and throw the thing on top, and we can live with her until the government could find the money at the NEC or whoever could find the money to do a proper road. Got the people suffering. Thank you. I, I, I agree. Yes, yeah, so wait, 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 wait. I, got, I told the caller already that I investigated the situation. I even went as far as getting an update on what may be the possibility, and the possibility is 2019. So 2019, maybe I'm saying with the demand, the workload, and requests from the Central Housing and Planning Authority. I'm hoping in 2019 that some funds could be allocated for the road, but it's not as easy done as you are saying it could be done everything costs money no contractor gonna come in and say uh, we're gonna bring a heavy duty machinery and throw some bricks and sand for the people purpose and 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 that is it right so it costs money and then you will come to the realization if we do such thing is that why we do it for you and we didn't do it for the next road or the next community 
I sure there's many roads in your in, in perfect harmony that needs to be looked at, like in Diamond. But how would we choose it? And would we be accused? Look, GCOM now is being being under attack because apparently the opposition say they hiring more Afro Guyanese and Indo Guyanese. The Minister of Public Security is on record saying I'm I, I short seven thousand uh, poli young recruits to become police. Where would he take the, the, where would you think he will get the recruits from? One one person say, Oh, pay higher wages and you get people. Yes, but that comes with a cost. I gotta take the money from somewhere. But if we have to open up the, the floodgates by paying higher salaries, who do you think the people will be attracted? Is Afro Guyanese. But then the Indo Guyanese and the leaders and those who complain will not say, Look, there's no Indian in police force. Proportionality doesn't, doesn't apply. But they have, they have a problem with when they're working at GCOM. They don't have a problem when they're in the police force and the public service. And so, oh, yeah, this, I mean. this, this is the thing I'm saying about in terms of the blame game. So I fixed your road, and then they're going to say, I fixed your road because you was calling this program. Right? But I always say, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. So continue to press, and you can continue to agitate me to, ag to be more aggressive against the com Ministry of Communities to ensure that your road is get done. But it wouldn't happen overnight that I could call any contractor to say, come, put some cross and run or level the road or grade the road and, and put some loom and put some sand and stone and call it charge. It, it wouldn't happen, right? These, so the, um, this is the reality. Minister, what, you, what the, you will be angry with me the way I put it out, but that is the reality. You may want to say because you call my way of speaking, I'm arrogant. And you say, I'm not going to support you because you're arrogant. But I going to show. I going to ensure you that I will press to ensure that your road is fixed because I can't do it. I'm not the minister of communities. I'm not the minister of finance, but I'm a member of parliament. You voted me there. The president is the one who say you're a minister within the ministry. And so, as a minister answerable to the president, as a member of parliament answerable to the fourteen thousand people that put me there. You might wonder how I get the figure of 14,000. Because everyone say it's 5,000, 6,000 make you MP. But I'm not an ordinary MP. I'm a, I'm a geographical member, parliament from Region 4. And Region 4 is the highest populated area. So the amount that will put me there is different from the amount of votes will put our MP from Region 1 or 2 or 3 or 5 or 6 or 7, 8, 9 or 10. Right? So. Because I'm an MP with that amount to support, I ensure that I will speak on your behalf. I will not get what I ask for, and never anybody will get what they ask for. But I'm going to assure you, I'm going to push. Maybe I push, and I get pushed back, and then I fall out. I mean, I go resign. <laughs> but if I do so, I do it because of you. Hello? Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Sharma. Yes. I just called to find out, man, it's going to earn nearly over six months now, and um, we can't get a shop license to support us. I know what GRA doing so long. In April, we usually get our shop license. Uh, um, thing I don't know if we, we're getting a big increase. So we're, we're really going on if you can shed some light on this. Shop license? I, as I said, if you had listened earlier, I don't really like to get involved with GRE. You know, get the Commissioner General. I, res I, I, have to re I have to respect the man. I have to call him Sir Stacia. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. But if that is what I have to call him to get things done, I will. Right? So uh, I don't want to say I'm not going to look into it. But I need you to speak to the minister himself, Minister Jordan. Go to his office. Like you come to my office, go to his office. If he's not there, come over to me. I'm, I'm not too far from him. Right? But if you have any issues, you need, to, you need to approach the responsible minister. And I am not the responsible minister. Right? Okay, then but I, I, I will, I will assist you. Uh, if if, if um, no other person, the person who's responsible is not looking at it, I will assist. Right? So you Shama, go. Um, 
I'm saying this across the board. I, my office is open. You come and see me, whatever issue you have. But I will have to speak to the minister, if it's the minister of public infrastructure, if the minister of communities, if the minister of education, health, whatever the case may be, it's their job. I only could represent you, your matter. I can't fix your matter. Okay? I, I see nothing in the papers over the news now, or nothing. That... I could fix your matter and demand it a fix. If you go to them and they're not acting, okay? I could say you, 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 you did what you had to do. You go to them, now you're coming to me. And I will push for your matter to be resolved. Still, I can't guarantee it will be resolved. But I represent, when you come to me, I represent you as a member of parliament, and I represent you as a member of the coalition government. I have my own party, my father party, the Drustra party. When I speak, I speak in for my supporters. You come to me, you want to support me, right? Yeah. And so I will give you my support. Yeah, um, another thing we see, we will get a big increase from Kaiwa, and this is the land of many waters. And uh, that's what we get in from Kaiwa. We can't even, you can't even wash your foot with it or drink it or clothes or nothing, you can't. Think. If you wash a white shirt today, by Kaiwanara, by that tomorrow it's on red. The water, even if it sinks, the water is, you know, red, red, red water. Okay. Uh, Good. I know how, how we got to pay for water where, where we can't, we can consume. Color, uh, thank, you. Water, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look, what is life? This argument that Guyana is land of many water, water <laughs> should be free, it can't fly. If you want, then go drink the water from where this water is free. To get water to your tap, it costs money. What, what costs more is that you have non-revenue water. Remember I told you about the, the system, the interconnective, the interconnective system, the water pipes and so on, and the sewage system, they're about 100 years old. Some of them are non-existent in some areas. Good. When there's a breakage, maybe there's a pothole, the pipe exposed, GT and T come and they, they put down a pole and the, and the board, the, 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 the guy will line. So many things could happen. The, the fixing a road, the border line, water loss. That is non-revenue water. The larger cost for water, this country is contributed to non-revenue water. So GWI will have to do its work in ensuring that they fix each and every leak. If they could fix each and every leak, which is costly and it's impossible also, well then they could bring down the cost of water. But don't run away with the idea that this is the land of many water. It is represented on the coat of arms. It is represented on the golden arrowhead. Yes, the land of many water. But no one would go and take a cup and drink a, a cup of black water. Maybe, yes, they do that in the rural areas. And they, they body immune to whatever those water may have in it. So they would not get sick. But I can't take a cup of that black water and drink it. I'm going to end up in public hospital. OK? so. What I'm saying to you, the cost of producing the water, you don't know the actual cost. If you want to know, I'm going to ask the CEO of GWI to be in the program, my next program Saturday, and he's going to tell you the figures, or I will tell you myself. But I don't want to give you a wrong figure, but I'm going to tell you it's very expensive. Why I know? Because they will have to come to the Ministry of Finance. The loans that they will take from IEDB or the grants they will get from the EU or wherever they may get um, grant funding from they will have to come through the Ministry of Finance. They will have to talk to us. So we know the situation. It's like GPL. GPL could give you electricity at cheaper cost, but they line loss and the theft is so high. When you're paying for electricity, you're paying for everything that is GPL deficiency. If GPL could correct the deficiency, you probably will have energy half the price or less than half than you're paying for now. And so, these deficiency and the, the destruction of the network system, if it's drainage pipes, if it's watering pipes, if it's, if it's the infrastructure for the electrical uh, network, 
It's all because it was neglected over the years by whoever was in charge. For 23 years, we only know one person. So who you want me to believe? But nevertheless, I got it fixed all now. And you want it now. You want it before the five years. Matter of fact, you want it within the first year. But is that possible? Hello. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Shabam. Yes, good afternoon. This person for Winter Forest called to report the GPL post and is not coming and do anything as yet. If the post filed on the day seven days, seven days up already, is and then nobody is coming and giving it look it after. Winter Forest. What yes. part what part of Winter Forest? So at Street Winter Forest. Well, when GPL would say to you seven days, fourteen days they're saying it because that is what is in their regulation. If they fail to do that, then this is where you go to the Public Utility Commission and you make a complaint against them. Okay? Okay. So they're not doing their job. I can't call the CEO and tell him go and fix your post. I would like to, sometime I do, but he, he doesn't have to listen to me. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yes, so sometime if it's serious, I'll call. Yes. Sometime possible will call yes. me and I will have to call the, the emergency connection network, and I have to talk to an operator who won't give me a reference number because you call me. I don't, I don't say, look, the minister call it. They don't have no system that they're gonna treat me special than you. Okay. You probably didn't get on to them. I'm lucky I have to stay on the phone for five minutes, get on to them, two o'clock in the morning because you got a problem. I had a copy of reference number, and I called you back and gave you it. But I'm gonna tell you this, if they do that to me, I'm gonna tell you next morning, I'm going to contact the CEO if nothing is done, okay. right? And I'm going to behave very bad. And so they don't like that, right? Okay. So if I have the time, 2 o'clock in the morning, to take a call from you, to contact them, to have an emergency crew to visit you because it is an emergency. Yeah. And by the morning, when I call you at 8 o'clock and you tell me the crew will reach you, well, then there is where it's called the CEO. But I will not pick up the phone and interrupt the CEO at 2 o'clock in the morning because they call me the minister. I'm not the responsible minister, right? Okay. But as a minister, I could say in public cooperation, if I would call the CEO of a GWI or the CEO of, I will never speak personally to this CEO yeah, of I GPL. But if I do call, they will show respect and they will ensure that the matter is looked at. But I don't like to be the one who call in and bothering these people. I like them to do their work. They're getting paid and getting paid very handsomely. Yeah, like right. the CEO of GPL probably is getting more than the president of the country. Two times or three times yeah, more. Yeah, but the CEO don't so, do nothing. So this, this is the reality. So why should I, you know, these people don't have to listen to me. I below their pay grade. <laughs> so people will not listen to you when you below the pay grade. So maybe that is one of the reasons why the minister had to raise the salary. Because just imagine the minister speaking to an officer below that is, uh, they have to take instruction from the minister, but that officer is getting three times the salary of the minister, four times or five times the salary of the minister. You can say, why well, I gotta listen to you for? Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, then, yeah. So this is, this is the situation. I understand what you're saying, but the reality is sometimes we have to know. We have to take a reality check. And so a life of a minister is not easy. And I don't like to be the one to be interrupting people. But if persons come to me and come to my office and they're persistent, I will get so angry. I don't care who, I have to call. But I'm gonna ensure I get the matter done. So I listen to your complaint, I take note. You have issues with GPL, you have questions that GWI need to answer. I know you want to know about the fire hydrants. I'm going to look at that. I can't deal with each and every single complaint. But what I could do is fix the problem. I could write to the minister, partisan the minister of infrastructure, say, Minister, Honorable Minister David Patterson, I have numerous complaints about the quality of service being uh, meted out to the customers of GPL. It's up to him if he wants to take action. GPL needs to implement a similar system like the, the water. The Hi, water. Mr. Sharma, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Please have a little sympathy on the, the sickness of Mr. Sharma. Yes. yes. And at the same time, and the family too, sorry, right? Yes. And um, at the same time, we tell that we are getting paid so late, the, 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 the Sentinel people paying security guards so late over here. 
Yes, yes, yes. We only get last one PD before yesterday. Oh, for where, where? Region 3? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. So please have a look at it. I, Security I guard for the, for, the, um, look at that. for the region. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. So, when, when I decide to become a politician, I'm given the opportunity by the President David Arthur Granger to be a minister to serve in his government. The reason I'm happy, and sometimes the reason I'm sad, the reason I'm happy is that I have more access to people. As a host of this program, and a, the, the deputy leader of the Jasra party, my reach was limited. It's up to if a minister would want to speak to me, or if a minister would want to see me, or if a, my access to a head of a cooperation will be accommodated. But now I'm a minister, this is my happy part. I could pick up the phone and call them. They could refuse to answer, but I'm gonna bother them, right? The sad part is when I do that and I don't get action. And that is make me very angry. And you don't want me to really get angry because when I get angry, I do, I do things that is not, um, what you may say, uh, is not realistic. So I hope that those are listening to the program, that when I call and I say I have a complaint, they take the complaint seriously. It's not my complaint. The complaint, the people that put me there. I'm here to serve you. The CEO is to serve me, right? So I'm your servant, you complain to me. And they are my servant, they're not my boss. So when I call them, they the better answer the phone and take action. Call her in there. I mean, it's a sorry to hear about your father, but yeah. let's get on with the thing, you know. Like you said, your daddy would have liked the program to go on. Yes. Um, two things, Mr. Sharma. They should have 10 more ministers like you in this country would have been perfect. Uh, ministers, do, you, you, you don't have access to them. You can't make an appointment and get you with ministers. You're one of few, you're the only minister probably people got access to. Mr. Granger should actually, or other ministers should really take a page out of your book. But they got a new trend coming up, Mr. Sharma. Everybody put in big, big bowlers on the government party. If you go into anywhere now, in Georgetown I'm talking about, and you want to park your vehicle, the people put big, big bullets, not on the bridge alone, you know, on the carpet, in, in a sense, wherever the land is, they would put this big, big bullets so you can't park. I wonder if I should hit my car a day parking. Who would be responsible? Isn't it the person who put the bullet? Mm, yeah, or if some, uh, if some accident or something happens? Yes. Cause serious. Correct, correct. No, you're correct. Correct. You know, everybody now putting big, big bullets. I don't know the infrastructure minister need to do something or the city council. It's, it's illegal for them to do it. It's illegal for them to put the bowler. One man put a piece of thing with a big spike, you know, <laughs> on the road edge, not on the carpet, on the edge of the road leading to his carpet. If you should ever run over that, you'd boss up your tire. People, but people put in uh, wood with nails, spike nails, big long nails. Yeah, but <laughs> on somebody the, should come out and get <laughs> Right, so. Mr. Sharma, there's a fourth time to laugh on the program. Okay. You're right. <laughs> that, is, that is what is ridiculous. So if I should run over the spike nail, what do I do now? <laughs> Go to the police, pol would the police take action, or they laugh at me? The police laugh at you. Well, I can't speak <laughs> for the police. I don't know. The police will laugh at him. Because but is it illegal for them to do that? No, it's not legal. It's illegal. That's what I'm saying. Is it illegal for them yes. to do that? Yes, it yes, is. Yes, but yes. I, guess, I, I guess they're doing it for beautify the parapet. They spend a lot of money. I would understand that. They look, people will dig out the mud, throw loom, throw sand, and plant grass, mm. plant flowers. And you could imagine that person don't want you to go with your... Um, but eight wheeler or they truck have and the drain the, the, the things going like to your fence. Yeah. I understand if they beautify that part of it, but you can't harm the drain to the road. There's the shoulder of the road. No, that's, that's true. Where, true. I mean, the roads are so narrow that people should be able to pull in to park all over in the world. People park on the government parapet or the city council parapet on the reserve. 
Yeah, the, the, and the, people don't go put big, big spike mail and all kind of things. The, Look, you ever pass in Camp Street by Demara Bank and Republic Bank? I consulted with the traffic chief. These people at Demara Bank and, um, and Citizen Bank, they buy cones now. And from there, they're marking out the white line going into the drain. They put cones all around the bank. So you as a customer, Don't park probably got to go and park by Fagatis and walk, which I am not a customer of Fagatis. But now I got to walk to Camp Street or park in front of somebody else. I'm a customer of the bank. I do, the, 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 the traffic chief said it's illegal for them to put it. So you know what? Every morning, if I should go to the bank or whenever I go to the bank, I get out my car, remove the cones. One morning, I got so angry, I threw it in the in the gutter. <laughs> because you know what? The guard didn't come out. Don't touch the cone. Don't. Why are you putting the cone there for? I'm a customer of the bank. Here's where I got to park. I got to park to go in the bank. I got to be very sensitive about security and so forth. I can go park in, in Cole Street and then walk to, to the bank. I think that people, I call the police, but the police never seems to want to address it. And it's illegal. They put no parking right to your room. And they painted themselves, you know. That, that Not the why. police put no parking. The police said if no parking is for everybody, but the managers could go and park there. Have a good day, Mr. Sharma. I guess these are things that are of concern with our narrowed and more vehicles. <laughs> Somebody should take some sort of, you know, look into these things. These are things that... That's for security reasons. That's and why for we parking need them. Thing, we need that. That's why, why we need that. Yes. That's why we need a proper parking policy, that that is that is sensible, and that it, that has that is regulated. Um, but it seemed to us that the people, the business people, business sector, doesn't want to have a parking policy. The last time, he's going to raise its head again because. There has to be a parking policy in the city, and, it, and that parking policy has to be sensible. It has to take into consideration uh, law and order, uh, what people can do and what people can't do. W what the gentleman said is correct. All these things that they're doing, these infractions, are, are highly illegal. And the, the, the problem is when you report to the police, the police say that they don't have jurisdiction. Um, they don't have the authority. You have people parking on the highway. You go on the West Coast, you see a man. Okay, Mr. Rahman, yeah. just have to cut you because yeah. the operator indicated that we out of time. So let me thank the viewers and listeners from Guyana, from the diaspora, from the neighboring um, countries around Guyana. This is the this is the program that is go live uh, in Guyana and to stream live throughout the world. And so thank you, the many callers for your support, for your prayers, and I know you continue to pray for the, your leader, the leader of the Just Trial Party, your friend, your father, your, you could say, you know, he's an all around for you. The one that was out there for you when you call him, he will, if it's whatever time, he will be there. Because of old age and illness, he cannot be there for you any longer. He put me out there, and I, shoulder that responsibility to answer my phone and to follow up on matters. And a lot of people are saying, look, Jaipal, I have to come into my community, vid um, video my road, show it like you used to. I, I say to them, I'm wearing a different hat. I'm a minister now. But nevertheless, it, I will do it. It's new, and I will do it. And so I will be coming out to the various community. If it's perfect harmony, I already had calls. And I said, I'm going to be coming out. and. But however, understand this, when I be out there, I'm a minister, right? I have to represent the government. And so I'm gonna show your, your, this, your road issues, whatever issue that you have in. Uh, however, but I will give my view on the matter. And so you know my view and that we have an issue. The issue is that there's financial constraints. And until we could say to the government, to the president, to the cabinet, that this is what the majority of Guyanese want. You want road, you don't want his children to be educated, or you don't want your health to be looked at. Whatever, we may have to decide to listen to the people, which we're supposed to be doing. But people have different views, and so we have to consider all the views. 
We can't do everything at the same time as you want it in the time frame that you want it. We have a manifesto to follow, a manifesto which I was part of, my party was part of, and I will ensure that um, those things are done and kept uh, alive. If it's not done within the three years, that it will be done or commence within the five years. Uh, so thank you for joining us on this life calling program and do have a good and safe Saturday. Thank you.